The circulatory system is the major transport system of the body, and its task is to transport the oxygen your body needs, the nutrients your body needs, things like hormones, uh, the immune system cells, things like antibodies, as well as to collect all of the waste that are being produced by your cells, especially things like carbon dioxide. Now there's three major parts to the circulatory system. There's the blood, the blood vessels, and the heart. The blood contains things like the liquid plasma that is the non-cellular uh, part of the blood. There's the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and then these uh, cell parts called platelets that are involved in blood clotting. There's the blood vessels. These are the tubes that the blood is actually going through. There's the arteries, veins, and capillaries. Now, it's very easy and common for people to get confused about the difference between arteries and veins because a lot of times people say, well, the arteries have oxygen in them, the veins don't. And most of the time that's true, but not all the time. The proper way to distinguish the two is what direction is the blood going in. In arteries, they carry blood away from the heart. Did you notice the A there? While well, veins carry blood back to the heart. So again, most of the time, yes, the arteries are carrying oxygenated blood. But if you're sending blood from the heart to the lungs, you don't do that to get uh, to bring oxygen to the lungs. You get it. You send blood away from the heart to the lungs to get the oxygen. So that's the one case where arteries would carry deoxygenated blood, while the veins that are coming back from the lungs to the heart, they're the ones that are carrying lots of oxygen. Now, capillaries are very thin-walled, typically one cell thick, and that allows the easy exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, as well as the other nutrients, with the cells that the capillaries are going through. And they are what connect, ultimately, arteries to veins. You can think of this as arteries are like freeways or highways, as are veins. Capillaries are residential streets. That is where you can park your car, you can get out of your car, and people can climb into the car. You don't try to park and exchange passengers in the middle of an interstate freeway. It just would not be a wise idea. Now the heart pumps the blood, and I'm going to go through the structure of the heart momentarily, but first I want to just mention a couple of concepts. The first is something called the systemic circuit versus the pulmonary circuit. The systemic circuit is that circuit of blood from arteries to capillaries to veins and back to the heart that is carrying blood to the body, to your brain, to your muscles, etc. And then it, after it delivers its nutrients, it gathers up waste and returns to the heart. The pulmonary circuit is the arteries, capillaries, and veins that go off to the lungs. So if we take a look at this diagram of the heart over here, you can see on the diagram what looks to be the left that's actually remember the patient's right this is something that screwed me up when i first started studying the heart and that was i looked at the diagram and it said right atrium and i said no that's on the left it's the patient's right so a lot of times when you're looking at this go oh okay so on the right hand side do you notice how everything is kind of this darkish purpley blue that's a common symbol used in diagrams and textbooks to indicate that this is low oxygen blood. So blood is collected from the upper body from something called the superior vena cava and from the lower body by a blood vessel called the inferior vena cava. These are two very large veins that collect blood that is low in oxygen. It's been used up by the rest of the body doing its normal activities. It comes into this entrance chamber of the heart on the right side. These en entrance chambers are called atria. So the right atrium collects the blood and squeezes it into this lower chamber. The lower, bigger chambers are called ventricles. The right ventricle, when it squeezes the blood, it pumps the blood out this pulmonary trunk to the pulmonary arteries off to the lungs. In the lungs, oxygen is absorbed from the lungs, carbon dioxide is dropped off, and we have our nicely bright red blood that returns through the pulmonary veins. Now it's oxygenated in the, these veins. Those are the only veins that are oxygenated. These pulmonary veins deliver the blood to an entrance chamber. Again, it's a vein, sorry, again, it's a, a atrium, but this time it's on the left side, the patient's left. The left atrium pumps the blood into the left ventricle. That left ventricle is the most muscular of the four chambers. That left ventricle, when it squeezes, it pushes the blood out the aorta, which is the biggest artery in the body, squeezing that blood out, and from the aorta, 
every other artery branches off ultimately, some going off to the upper body, and then the aorta dips down behind the heart to feed the lower body. So the aorta is the beginning of the systemic circuit. The vena cavas are the end of the systemic circuit. <clears throat> the pulmonary arteries are the beginning of the pulmonary circuit. The pulmonary veins are the end of the pulmonary circuit. Just so you know, these weird white things here, those are valves. They're one-way doors that close to prevent backflow. So that, that when the right and left ventricles squeeze together, whoosh, they blow open these valves here, which are called semilunar valves. But as they squeeze, the valves that led backwards, they slam shut. And that's the first sound of the heartbeat, the first sound. When the ventricles relax, the pressure inside here drops, the semilunar valves close. That's the second sound of the heartbeat. The so when you're hearing the of the heartbeat, the first sound is the atrioventricular valves slamming shut. The second sound are the semilunar valves slamming shut. I've had some kids tell me that it's the sound of the heart squeezing. If you've ever wondered what the squeezing of a muscle would sound like, put your ear to your bicep and squeeze. All you hear is your shirt moving. All right? So now that you know the anatomy of the heart and the function of the circulatory system, you're good to go.